Here's another essay we're going to take a look at called Discussing uh, Discuss Two Possible Solutions to the Market Failure Arising from Negative Externalities. Now, again, we're going to do the four part approach for this essay. Again, starting with first the definitions of market failure and negative externalities. This question asks you to discuss two possible solutions. So what's expected is an analysis of one solution as well as a second and a for and against both. The options are straight from the specification. This particular student chose taxation and also includes a diagram to explain the method in which it works. The second approach chosen in this particular essay is also going to be then legislation. So we have legislation and taxation. Now at first glance this essay looks heavy on taxation, light on legislation. But let's begin. Okay, reading through it. Market failure is when the free market fails to provide an efficient allocation of resources. Negative externalities are the costs to the third party which occur when private costs to individual making the production or consumption decision are less than the social cost. Our right, definitions are correct. Taxation is one solution to correct market failure which is arising from negative externalities. Introducing an indirect tax on products generates a reduction in consumption of the goods which produce the negative externalities. Diagram to show why negative externalities are an example of market failure. All right, we have it correctly labeled negative externality diagram. All right, with marginal private benefit equal to marginal social benefit and marginal social, marginal social cost being greater than marginal private cost. And then we have the correctly labeled cost and benefits on the Y and output and quantity on the X. I have to reiterate, it's very important to make sure your labels are correct and also the diagram. Now here is an impact of a tax to correct this externality. We have a supply and demand diagram showing the impact of a tax reducing quantity, uh, equilibrium quantity and raising the equilibrium price. And correctly explained below is the explanation required to support the diagram. An indirect tax will internalize a cost. The government will place this tax on producers which increase their cost of production. The tax should be equal to the size of the external costs associated with the product. In the case of air travel, this will mean that the polluter pays for the cost of the air and noise pollution. Okay, good, uh, good use of, his, of an example. The increase in the cost of production will shift the supply curve from S to S1 in the diagram, which will lead to a higher price, which more fully reflects the true cost of the product to society. The higher price, the high price will lead to contractions in demand, and as a result, the tax is effective in reducing the consumption of the product from Q to Q1. All right, that's how the, how the policy or the approach will work. However, the effectiveness of the policy depends upon the price el elasticity of demand for the product in question. This is analysis with a bit of evaluation because we're going to challenge the effectiveness of the policy. If the product has inelastic demand, consumers will be unresponsive to changes in price, so the producer will pass on most of the tax to them, giving them a higher consumer burden, but they will still continue to purchase the product often because the product is addictive or viewed as essential. This is a significant point because if the tax does not reduce consumption, there will still be market failure. Based on this, tax may not be the best solution. Now the student here clearly explains why uh, tax can work and then why maybe tax can't work. Another argument in favor of using indirect taxes to deal with negative externalities is that this policy will generate revenue for the government. This revenue will be particularly high if the tax is placed on inelastic products. Generating revenue is crucial for the government in the current economic climate as they have a large deficit. Therefore, this is a significant point. In addition, the revenue generated could be used to fund other schemes to reduce consumption of the product, such as education, which would solve the problem rather than just trying to change people's incentives through the price mechanism. Money could also be used to try and minimize the costs on third parties, for example, paying for noise insulation for houses near airports. These points make a very strong argument that tax may be the best policy. Wonderful explanation, thoroughly analyzed, looking at both sides of it. And even taking it further, one problem with using indirect taxes to solve this problem is it will be difficult for the government to get the size of the tax right because the tax should cover the external costs, negative externalities, and this is virtually impossible to give a monetary value. 
If the tax is too small, it would be ineffective. However, if the tax is too high, consumer burden would rise too much and citizens would stop buying the product altogether. All right, now this is moving more towards analysis and evaluation of the tax because of getting the sizes correct and what happens if the size is too big and what happens if the size is too small. This is an excellent evaluation technique. Right? Not, this is how it works. This is how it doesn't work. This is why the size is so important because if it's too big, here's the end result. If it's too small, here is the other end result. An alternative method to taxation is legislation. This could work by the government placing general restrictions on negative products such as cigarettes. The type of legislation the government could put on cigarettes is banning them from public areas such as pubs, which has already been done. The drawback of legislation is that it takes a very long time for laws and regulations to be completely enforced and for the law itself to be made official as acceptance of a law is a very long progress process. On balance, I therefore think a combination of both taxation and legislation should be put on negative products such as cigarettes in order to reduce consumption most effectively. A decrease in consumption evidently lowers the external costs, negative externalities produced by the product which benefits the general public who suffer from these. Taxation would mean that consumers pay, hopefully making the negative product more elastic, so consumers will be more responsive to a change in price. However, if tax is not as, def as defective as initially planned, if people kept buying cigarettes because they're so addictive, then legislation will be effective. Based on this, tax alone may not be the best incentive when combined with legislation. It is likely to be highly successful. Now, for me reading this immediately, you're probably thinking a lot of this is about taxation, not enough about legislation. It is way too short and limited, and that's going to cost the person writing the essay. But content and knowledge are evident, so they're going to hit the L1 marks. Two methods are introduced and defined. L2, discussion is in the context of negative externalities and how legislation and indirect taxation can help reduce the resulting market failure. The analysis is weighed heavily in favor of indirect taxation and does not cover legislation in depth. The pros and cons of indirect taxation are evident, however, the discussion on legislation leaves much to be desired. The evaluation is strong for indirect, tax indirect taxation as a solution to market failure, resulting from negative externalities, but there is little material in just legislation which holds this essay back. Now, after I read through this, I know the student knows their economics inside and out, understands externalities, but the biggest problem here is they did not elaborate on the pros and cons of legislation. This reads mostly about as an essay on indirect taxation. You know, we've got at least three or four different paragraphs on this topic. Unfortunately, the student did not discuss legislation in enough depth. Uh, depth. So that's why this particularly uh, this particular essay was awarded 11 out of 18 marks. Um, to improve it, needs to have further evaluation and really needs to establish the uh, the legislation aspect of it. Because what's going to happen is that on the mark scheme, you're going to see a you know, there will be a limitation based on how many marks you can earn if you haven't discussed one option in depth. And this is a, a unique kind of question. Uh, normally, the 18 marker is going to ask you about one solution and examining for and against and evaluating it. This is interesting to see that it's examining two possible solutions. So this is a new type of question. But ultimately, still falls within the same general organization and pattern as all previous 18 mark essays.